Hi everyone, this is uh, the future past Simon speaking. The night before this is going to go up as I'm editing it, uh, I'm very tired. Uh, so I decided to just take the easy path and not really edit this episode. So sorry about the audio quality. Jeff was really sick. He had cough drops in his mouth the whole time, so you might hear those clacking around. I think I punched my mic at one point in time, and I didn't really know how to deal with the sound that generated. Also, uh, Jeff was sick, is, is sick, still sick. Uh, so he coughed a whole bunch. And the issue was, was that it was like in the middle of sentences, or like we would make jokes about it afterwards, and it felt strange cutting it out. So I just silenced it and I kind of trimmed it down as much as I could. So there will be some kind of weird jumps into words. Um, just know that you didn't want to listen to it. I had to listen to it. It was bad noise. It, 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 he blew out his mic several times. It was not pleasant. So sorry if you were really hoping to listen to it. Anyway, have fun. Podcast and tries to explain the fictional world using science. I'm Simon. And I'm Jeff. So Jeff, you know those days when you'd be curled up curled up in your teens, just ready to just watch some pointless pointless television. Sure, was I curled up like in teens or was I in my teens and curled up? You were in your teens and curled up. If you were curled okay. up in teens Very important <laughs> difference. <laughs> if that was if that was a that's that's a crime uh, there, Jeff. Yeah, that's why it's a very important difference. Because I do not recall one of those. And we'll never know which one. But uh, <laughs> That's true. There was always that, like, at least for me, there was always one show in particular that was like a go-to for me for just mindless television. MASH. Actually, no. I could never get into MASH. I, Neither could I. Yeah, I people love it, and I'm like, it just, yeah. It doesn't... It's that intro is just so long. And boring well that i'm used to because i watch like anime seven hours <laughs> i mean i i mean again if you have you ever watched an anime like the the beginning to even galleon is like a third of the episode is just intro <laughs> <laughs> that's true but that the intro music is pretty great that's that's also true i mean the same thing is like cowboy bebop is you know awesome space jazz and you're like mm-hmm. all right i'll listen to this every single time this will be. This is. This is fine. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, no, I was referring to uh, uh, the the greatest, the great Matt Groening, uh, and his uh, and his creation of uh, of a Futurama. Oh yeah, that makes way more sense than Mash, especially for the time periods that we were teenagers in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So this is a show for anyone who doesn't know from the creator of The Simpsons. Right? Yeah, it must be. Maybe I'm completely yeah, wrong so, about that. Right? God, that... I feel like if we have to fact check one thing, it's that. <laughs> it's the yeah, that's true. We we're <laughs> still in the factual part of the show. <laughs> I there's a there's a, a interview with John Favreau going in the background that's been muted on my screen, and it's very distracting. Yes, you're right. By the way, it is John. It is Matt Groening. They also did do The Simpsons. Yes, also did do The Simpsons. Good. Okay. So, uh, so this is a show that is set. Uh, it, it was originally set in the turn of the century, uh, in two thousand, where a pizza delivery boy named Philip J. Fry gets cryogenically frozen. Spoilers. Sorry, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Spoilers for the first episode. <laughs> well, it's, I was realizing they're, they're, we're going to do spoilers for, uh, you know large portion the rest of yeah, the, the yeah. series yeah, yeah, yeah for the deep deep lore that it's in this in this television show <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay sorry uh, now i just i was reading the thing that was up on my on my page um 
Yeah, so he's he gets cryogenically frozen for a thousand years accidentally, and that means he wins. well oh, maybe accidentally. Oh, maybe yeah. I don't think accidentally at all. Actually, no, you're right. Accidentally Spoilers. on purpose. Actually, very deliberately. So he gets yeah. So he gets frozen in the year two thousand. He wakes up in the year three thousand, and mm-hmm. and he's like, I can like relive my life, and he's like, you know. I'm gonna just like I'm gonna enjoy this this new world, and not become a delivery boy, which is exactly what he was in the year 2000. Turns out he's right. literally only suitable for one job, and it is delivery boy. Yes, so he ends up working for his great 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 nephews. Maybe that's too many greats. I think it's three or four generations. Uh, yeah, something like that. His his delivery interspace delivery company called Planet Express, and and mm-hmm. just hijinks ensues as they go to new worlds, and they discover <laughs> meet new planets and yeah. civilizations. Yeah, and you just kind of get to experience like the moon is now a like a tourist trap kind of thing. Oh yeah, that's also <laughs> a thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, Mars has one of the greatest universities on it keep on hitting my my mic so yeah so this this show has a lot of like goofy goofy science in it people have people have commented on um like many of matt groening's shows and episodes he actually invests in like mathematicians and scientists to help him come up with Mm -hmm. like background things that that make sense like halfway reasonable things yeah yeah like there's a there's a entire uh mathematical theorem that <laughs> welcome to Jeff every winter with bronchitis listeners <laughs> welcome welcome to our podcast within a podcast listening to Jeff's throat sounds <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst ASMR possible <laughs> well I'm sure someone's into it I'm sure but I'm sure the majority of people not into it this is really cold I'm gonna get myself a bigger blanket yeah. <laughs> let me just let me just wrap myself up a little bit so that I'm nice and nice warm. So yeah, so there's like a there's like a mathematical theorem which was uh how many permutations do you need to transfer brains between people without transferring a person's brain twice to the same body, right? Uh I have no idea what you're referring to. This is that's the episode where they start switching brains, where they start swapping brains. With the, yeah, I don't remember that episode. And they have to bring in the 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 <laughs> the, uh, the globe trotters to help solve their mathematical theorem. Okay, that part I remember. I don't remember the rest of it. Yeah, so there's like an actual there's like an actual mathematical proof that they had to come up with, which was how it's very you guys can look it up but it's essentially it's how many additional people do you need to introduce to to swap like something without swapping to the same without doing the same swap twice and get everyone oh, back okay. to their original bodies now. yeah um that it was it's very cool but we're not going to address mm-hmm. any of those actual science things we're going to address because that's real actual science. <laughs> yeah, we're going to address the uh the this other stuff that no one seems to no one seems to call them out for. <laughs> like conservation of mass, things like that. Really strong crab right. men. You know, basic stuff that you probably should know if you're going to be doing making a show that's a science fiction show, but it's fine. We're good. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, so let's start off. You want to start off with with Philip J. Fry and his whole his whole deal. His whole deal. Uh, yeah. There's a lot to dive into with good old Fry. Oh, that wasn't a yes or a no. So, uh, well, <laughs> I think... guess it wasn't. Let's go with yes. Okay. Okay. I I mean we're gonna have to address it at some point. I feel like it's a good it's a good uh, uh thing to start with uh, introduction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the the character Philip J. Fry, and I guess one thing we may have to to have to deal with is, so, in an episode where they are watching the sun explode, a sun explode. Mm-hmm. At the same time, Fry puts metal in the microwave. Right. It sends them back in time to the 1950s, which is what happens 
any time you put metal in the microwave. Oh well, well, specifically near an exploding star. Yeah, you got you got to be near an exploding star. Uh, that sends it back to the 1950s, and uh, they end up becoming the aliens that landed in Roswell. But in that episode, mm-hmm. Fry tries to save his grandfather from dying so that he won't disappear. But it turns out his grandfather dies. He thinks that his gra- what was his grandmother is not his grandmother. And he ends up... Uh... I'm looking for a, like a... Yeah, no, I think who he thinks was his grandmother is his grandmother. Turns out he to just be... also is his grandfather yeah yeah so he ends up becoming his own his own grandfather um right with there's two things to unpack here first of all how do you go back in time from metal in the microwave (laughs) (laughs) uh and the other thing is um how do you uh exist before you exist to make it so you exist yeah that's what we call paradox simon well let's just actually now that i think about it probably be significantly harder to explain <laughs> than than we originally planned it to be we thought so well, well okay well, let's start with the easy one okay time travel <laughs> yeah the easy <laughs> one <laughs> so obviously there's something about so uh i uh uh have an idea which is okay okay so let's assume so a supernova is caused by like a super uh, collapse. So there's a moment where a sun is is very dense, uh, mm-hmm. and and you do get some warping of time at at that kind mm-hmm. of particular particular moment. And so, what if like if at that kind of ex- extreme moment in space and time. Like the Planet Express ship just got slingshot back in time. Well, I was actually thinking more like the the energy that was released from their microwave was able to punch a hole, and so they kind of had a wormhole, but not through space through time, and that's what they get sucked. Through. Okay, but it's only because the fabric of time is already kind of at this extreme stretch. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that makes sense, right? I, well. I think it's the closest we're going to get to making sense. Yeah, I think worm- oh, it's got to be a wormhole somehow, because that's like the only way to travel instantaneously through space or time. Right. Uh, Without it. Because, like, yeah, otherwise there'd just be, like, a slowing or speeding of time. Yeah. It wouldn't necessarily be, like, going back. Yeah. Exactly. That's That's the issue I was having, is, like, there's a lot of good ways mm-hmm. to change the flow of time. But it generally is only going in. It's one. hard to loop back, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very hard to loop back. There's actually a whole bunch of stuff about parity and uh, also the existence of, of wormholes. You need to have like a crazy, impossible mathematics to work out. It's it's nuts. Anyway, uh-huh. we've talked about it before <laughs> in the show. So yeah. So now you want to deal with the uh, the paradox the how can you be your own grandfather yeah, well i mean i guess that is the next step i mean obviously so I... th- it, sorry no continue i was going to say like the 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 issue with paradoxes to kind of maybe maybe oversimplify it a little bit is it's mm-hmm. it's it's not somehow you created a cy- uh, a cycle that has no beginning but right you have to have a beginning that's the issue i would think right uh yeah i think that would be like the biggest issue especially with this is like because fry can't be his own grandfather unless he already existed and he can't exist if he didn't have a grandfather prior yeah so is that really impossible i feel like i feel like i i feel like it it, listen time is a flat circle (laughs) (laughs) i think maybe potentially it could work Hmm. because uh it would be extremely unlikely because like uh, i guess his he would have to be giving like his the sperm that fertilized the egg would need to be like 
the exact same sperm as what originally did that, like, with his actual, like, grandfather before it was him. So, here's the thing, I don't, why I don't think that that actually needs to happen. Um, Hmm. I think it's only, it's only a paradox if you think about the causality in one direction, but what if we think about it like the reason he existed in like he existed in 1950 so he must exist in the year 2000 okay like, but the only reason that he existed in 1950 was because he existed in 2000 yeah so <laughs> i i feel like you think you said something much more but, profound but, well, than you did <laughs> well what well well what i'm saying is is that he so like just like any child the the reason they like the reason i exist now is because my parents existed right but if you look at that backwards it would be i like my parents existed to give me existence which to me is is just i'm so i'm flipping i'm saying mm. cause and effect doesn't need to go in one direction i'm saying the effect can be the cause so 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 Fry has it exists in 1950. Therefore, he must exist in 2000. It's only a paradox if he ceases to exist in 2000, or actually in 3000. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that one as much. I can't really sink my teeth into that as much. I don't think. Do we just um, a- agree to disagree? I don't because I think I am so smart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do, Simon. Yeah, I think. Well, and there's more that gets tied into this, though, uh, with the brain swarm, brain spawn, brain spawn brain down spawn. the line, where because of this paradox, Fry doesn't have, what, delta brain waves, right? Yep. Which So, and I don't think just kind of like a thought experiment reversing cause and effect as effect and then cause would would cover like a basic or like mm, yeah i i agree it like that weird like quirk difference in just fry i i agree if if like recycling genetic material like that wouldn't cause an abnormality right because it's not the same as like incest or or something like that because there's there's two because he is he, here's the thing he is not related to his grandmother in the same way that like siblings are right. are related or cousins are related if you're dealing with you know like the royal families of Europe right so it it he actually would have perfectly fine genetics it I actually that I think definitely wouldn't be true because he would have like a quarter. Like I mean, generally statistically, it would be like a quarter inherited from her, right? Oh, I guess you're right. So I guess so. It'd be like second cousins or something. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Which I mean does make viable offspring. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I I think I think yeah. I don't think that he is genetically enough. It's not incestuous enough for it to be, like, a huge <coughs> issue. Right. I guess there is the issue of if this cycle is going on infinitely, it, it, with, like, an infinite number of permutations, are they saying that his genetics... One of those permutations just happened to be, like, the successful outcome? And we're getting into, like, parallel universe stuff here, Simon? I, yeah, I didn't want to, but... <laughs> Yeah, so, that's kind of felt like inevitable, though. I well, I kind of uh, yeah. it goes hand in hand with time travel. It 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 yeah, it does. But I, what up? Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> yeah. I guess it, to me, it just seems like it's it's got to be that that the lack of genetic diversity in the quarter of Philip J. Fry is causing his Mm -hmm. so it meant that his grandmother must have already had whatever genetic uh abnormality would cause the no delta brainwaves right 
Could be, yeah. And I, I mean, heck, it could have been like a combination that ends up being recessive and then uh, going back in with Fry again made it express that, that gene because there otherwise wouldn't be expressed. Yes. Yes, this makes sense to me. A hey, pun it square. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh hmm. That okay, yeah. So it's it's essentially like she just has like and the only reason like normally it would be a recessive gene that would die out. The only reason it hasn't mm-hmm. died out is just because you're recycling your genetic material. So really Philip J. Fry is like fifty percent his grandmother because of Right? Uh, or maybe it's 25. It's very... That's, I mean, it, would, it would increase the percentage, but I don't know if it would bring it up to 25%. Yeah, like, there's he has an increased amount of his grandmother because, it's really, she's the only genetic input into the line, mm-hmm. apart from Fry's mother. Right. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's 33%. I. That sounds more correct to me. Mm-hmm. But it's also very confusing. Yeah, so, yep. <laughs> well, now we had kind of, I guess we have to deal with the fact that, you know, Delta brainwaves are a thing. Right. They say that Delta brainwaves are the are the essential brainwave that determines the IQ of all living things. Also, robots and plants. <laughs> um, is this they Futurama, or they, like... This is they Futurama. Published papers today. They, they real world, it's just a, a brainwave that is... Uh, associated with sleep and that gets released by the by the thalamus um, right. so okay. it's, it's just more of like a a type of thought isn't quite what it is it's more like it's, it's a, a frequency of thought. Um, yeah well i was gonna say that and i was like that just sounds stupid <laughs> I, well i think that's actually what it is though it yeah it's it's like a as far as i know brain waves are very similar to like the hertz at which other yeah. things operate at, so it's it's kind of like their version of like, like clicks or or, or like per second things happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's per second like repolarizations and things like that. Mm-hmm. Here's here's Jeff looking it up, so that I don't yep. sound like such an idiot. <laughs> uh yeah, it's measured in hertz. So yeah, I'll get you close enough. <laughs> I think I I like I. To me, brainwaves are very difficult. But I would like to say that... So so this just means that Fry can't sleep, I'm pretty sure. His brain is so energetic. He, yeah, so he just... it. So... Uh, yeah, I guess... I mean, I think he would have to sleep. You just can't get into, like, deep sleep. Because, like, if you don't sleep, you do die. Yeah, no, that's that's for sure the case. <laughs> you, you do die. But... But... What might happen is that... Fry essentially has like a stable form of like Alzheimer's or or uh, like almost like CTE, like like a severe. Mm. I'm not saying that people with Alzheimer's or CTE are are inherently their own grandfathers. Or their own grandfathers, or like whether they're inherently <laughs> dumb, but like that kind of seems like that is what is causing his brain to kind of malfunction is the lack of sleep that he's getting. Because he cannot essentially mm-hmm. flush out the metabolites from his brain, he can't like reorder a lot of his uh, electrical pathways, because he just just doesn't sleep particularly well mm-hmm. for his entire life. Right. Yeah, I like it. I think it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense to me too. Yeah, look at that. Hey, you guys, uh, you guys we got one. Yeah, you guys thought this was going to be the hard one. Well, if we're talking. <laughs> Boy, this is you know what this is the reason I like shows because there's like an internal storyline and we can just go from one to the other. <laughs> so, well, now we can talk about the brain spawn. All right, the brain spawn, which were what floating brains trying to consume, like consolidate all of the knowledge in the galaxy, in the universe, maybe. Yeah. Well, they they have one mission. And that is to, and this I think is kind of clever. <coughs> they got one mission, which is to uh, know everything there is to know in the universe. And to do that, they want to learn everything that's in the universe, and then destroy and then the universe. Destroy it. So no thing. So there's no new knowledge. Exactly. Right. Yes. Man, this all come back to me. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. You you remember Scooty Puff Jr.? Sure do. And how it's terrible. <laughs> how it's terrible? Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess the, the the thing about the brain spheres, though, is that they have kind of like a telekinetic? Telepathic? They can be telekinetic because they float around and can manipulate things, but they do not have limbs. That, yes. I... I guess also telepathic because they can Cause, communicate, and they can also make people stupid, and right, they can. Boy, they can also like cause people to vividly hallucinate using knowledge, using books. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the that's the time that they go in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the time they go into to Moby Dick and uh, Huckle, Huckleberry Finn. Is it? I think it is. I think so. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I have an idea for this too. So okay. So what if the telepathic? Okay, uh, you know what? This is actually from the show. What if the 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 way that they make people stupid is by reducing that delta brain waves so that no one can sleep, and they all just get mm, mm-hmm. very very tired. <clears throat> like it's all just brain fog. Constant yeah, brain fog. that that part makes sense. I guess. It would be because it happens pretty like instantaneously in the show, though, doesn't it? It does. Uh, that that I feel like is the only sticking point in that in your hypothesis there. Otherwise, I like it a lot. What if what if it does? So what if it suppresses the delta brainwave? Um, but so so when the human brain, maybe I don't know. I'm not a neuro chemist <laughs> neuroscientist uh maybe when you when you diminish the delta brain wave the rest of the higher frequency waves get amplified because you still have like because they have to make up for it exactly you have those clock cycles that gotta be doing they something. gotta be doing something uh or maybe what they do is instead of turning off the delta brain wave they speed it up and it just causes your brain to kind of burn through a lot more energy okay i like that and and that causes like metabolites and things to build up so it's as if you had like not slept for a really long time but it's Mm -hmm. just that your brain it was like operating at a way faster frequency than it should have been for a short period of time like it's like just like burns your brain out like a emp but for brains Mm -hmm. i can get behind that I like that. All right. Uh, do you want to, I mean, do you just want to like... <laughs> do I want to pick it apart? I'm thinking about stuff, but I don't know if there's anything reasonable to pick it apart with. Well, the I guess I guess how do they amplify the brainwaves? Do we think that they just have like large electromagnetic fields that like they pulse so that they, so that the, the brainwaves that occur within a a person have to match up with the brain waves that are occurring within the brains. Um, like, so it, it maybe, yeah. And it like hits some sort of like resonance frequency or something with it. Well, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking more like, um, um, what are those? What are those? The, ah, oh, man. Yeah. Kind of like that. But like, it, it's, it's more like it's, it, it has like, like the, the, the pulses that are given up by the brain are so strong that it, mm-hmm. it forces all of the other electrical fields to match it in at least free, at least in 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 frequency in its in its peaks and valleys hmm. i don't i don't know if that's how that works a mechanism that would do that yeah well well i feel like i feel like like that would definitely... i mean like it can broadcast out to like overwhelm those frequencies but i don't think it would change them necessarily hmm what, kind of what I'm thinking is like, it's kind of like a radio, like, I, I like, uh, yeah, and that's like where I was thinking mm-hmm. coming from, where like basing your idea, it would be able to flood, kind of the the area with the higher frequency, but I don't know how it would, like, force the... other things to match it. No, that makes, I yeah, that makes sense to me too. I think that's that's a yeah. So I think it ha- it just it just overwhelms the brain with a bunch of activity. Mm. Um, uh, do, uh, so how do we think that it floats, and how do we think it's telekinetic? 
I know, I know. We come um, back to this this great question. <laughs> I feel like we do this way more often than we want to. It's because everyone... And we always struggle with an explanation for telekinesis. It's because everyone does telekinesis, uh, but nobody thinks about <laughs> and none it. None of them make sense. Yeah, it's there's no good there's no good explanation for telekinesis. Um, so they are s- it, mm-hmm. thinking. Um, they similar to how they like override or like overpower the brain frequencies. They're able to like match and i don't know i'm stuck on resonance frequencies they're able to match resonance frequencies with like a thing Mm. and it just vibrates it up into the air (laughs) uh i don't think that makes sense you're right but pick it apart (laughs) well i just uh i'm just like i i would think if something like is this is this electrical that they're doing this with because i feel like that wouldn't work with insulators Mm. like yeah like you can't turn like asphalt into like a a magnet and shake it apart right however i like i kind of like this idea if if you could do it with like like what so what i'm thinking is uh they got this they got this like blue fuzz around them i'm looking at a picture Mm -hmm. of them and to me that looks like highly ionized oxygen um, okay. Um, so I'm wondering, maybe they do something like they ionize the gas around them, um, and then they, uh, ooh, I, ooh, I got an idea. So, so, so they ionize the gas around them, and then they themselves are porous, mm-hmm. so that they can like suck the air, like they have like a flow of air around them. Mm-hmm. That's like that they suck air down from above them and then push it out beneath them and to just like stay afloat. And they do that. That they part do... tracks. How do they fly through space? Uh, magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's... Like I was with you until I remembered that they do also <laughs> do that in space. Well, I mean, once you're in space, it's so much it's easier. It's so much what, easier. With that no air resisting, <laughs> but also not pushing. Uh, but but have they have we seen them change direction in space? I'm pretty sure we have. Yeah. Well, have we? Because that's the thing. Because you can fly through space. You just can't <laughs> change direction. Well, like, does the? Because I'm thinking around of them like going around the infosphere. Mm. Um, oh. and that could just be like they get caught in the gravity and then they just kind of circle around it. Yeah. But I don't know if they change direction. Mm. I am going to say no. Because <laughs> it's easier that <laughs> Because it's easier that way. <laughs> Do you think the internal concertine motion works in space? <laughs> uh, hmm. My guess is no, because I think... It I is kind of giving you something to push off of. <laughs> I, I don't Probably know. Probably not, because there's so. nothing to resist it. Yeah, I feel like you would just float away from the surface. Yeah. Anyway, I, that was just a, a little a little aside. A little snake joke. A little snake joke, <laughs> yeah. Watching a snake in space probably would be very terrifying, because, yeah. Cause who knows where they're going to be. <laughs> yeah. They don't. <laughs> uh, God. Hmm. I... What if, what if they are? What if their magnetic fields are so strong that they're able to like push off of like uh, the solar winds and things like that? Sure, I mean, like that's more of an explanation than I can come up with with anything else. I think. Or, or oh wait, but if they can, it, all they need to do is generate light. So maybe that's what they do in space. They just use like light cannons. And they they fly by glowing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. I forgot that that was a thing because that is a thing. You can do that in space. Everybody, if you ever go into space, bring a flashlight because it, you can you can use it to fly I mean, very slowly, but you can use it to fly. Oh, well, not very slowly. I mean, like it just takes long. T- it's a very low acceleration. Yeah. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. 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 So obviously, now that we've done the brain spawn, unless there's something else you wanted to uh, to bring up. Uh, no, I'm just trying to figure out how to link this article of a snake in microgravity to you. <laughs> to our podcast? 
uh it's always good to know that you're you're on the ball you're thinking about ideas you're 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 a you're an ideal guy uh, uh, no i think you're the <laughs> idea guy i just pick apart what you say until you make sense uh so well there was one thing like do we think that the way that they could just cause you to vividly vividly hallucinate and that's just like something they can do <coughs> what was that do we think that they can just cause you to vividly hallucinate Cause yeah, yeah. I mean, if they can affect like your, your brain waves and stuff, sure. Yeah. I don't see why they wouldn't. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that, that we were on the same page about that, because uh, that mm-hmm. is something that they can do. They do they do go into books. Um, however, now we get to deal with the Niblonians. Mm-hmm. So, the Niblonians are a uh, they are a group of 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 creatures that are long lived and celebrated poopers. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Jeff, for that YouTube video. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, they are uh, they are like little three eyed creatures. They got two eyes and then a stock eye. Uh, mm-hmm. and they kind of look like monkeys. I would say monkeys. Uh, but kind of. Yeah, that's the closest. They're humanoid ish, but uh, their their big thing is the fact that they eat whole animals they're very small i guess i should say that they're very small <laughs> they're maybe the size mm-hmm. of like a soccer ball uh but they eat like they can eat like elephants they just like unhinge their jaw and swallow them whole and then they mm-hmm. they poop a highly concentrated energy source called dark matter mm-hmm. oh they do they do Ugh, i forgot that it was dark matter <laughs> yeah uh so it could just that could just be like a trade name like Kleenex or Saran Wrap, <laughs> right? Because it it is like a fuel source, so it's like saying, "Oh, they they poop out Exxon mm-hmm. or other other brand names." That I actually don't know if I'm allowed to say or not, so I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, you're probably fine. I feel like I mean, like, who's gonna be like? Let me send a cease and desist warning to these two guys. Well, on this wiki. The D and M of Dark Matter is capitalized, so I'm willing to bet that that could be a brand name for oh. something. Oh, for sure, for sure, because it's it's and it's a mom corp thing, so they got to brand everything. Yeah. So yeah, but it it is highly concentrated and it is highly flammable. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, I, what do we think is going on inside of the the, the Niblonians to create this? And I guess how are people easily picking them up? When they do presumably have feces inside of them, Ooh, still, huh? That's a good question. I I didn't I didn't think of that, but you're right. If, if they got the feces inside of them, how do you pick them up? Again, welcome to the second iteration of the, of the podcast. Of the podcast, Jeff's throat Jeff's noise. throat no- <laughs> Jeff's bronchitis throat noises. <laughs> we're we're workshopping the name still. <laughs> yeah. So hmm. So we obviously, obviously, the dark matter comes from there, taking in a large amount of organic matter, flattening it, like, like, yeah, like compressing and it, just making it super dense. Exactly. It's like super oil. Um, S- super oil, I think. I don't think so. Okay. I guess it'd be coal. It'd be like super coal. But yeah. But yeah, here's the thing: if it's like so dense, why is it not a diamond? Cause it's even more dense than that. Cause it's even more dense than that. <laughs> that kind of makes sense, but yeah. So I so <laughs> for as dumb as it sounds, it does make sense. So do we? Th- is this like a Bose Einstein condensate of of organic matter what, of poop? Yeah, poop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't argue against it. Okay, so these. So here's the question: To get there, these creatures have to be very cold and have a lot of internal pressure. Well, I don't know if they're very cold, but they do definitely look like they have a lot of internal pressure. <laughs> just just from their just from their outside, uh, all their their gaskets and their you know steel yeah, walled. Uh-huh. Uh, I just like that facial expression. <laughs> that's that's a man who's got a lot of internal. He's got to fart real bad. Um, <laughs> right. God. So, but like, do we think it's like an like uh is a portal to a different world that has different physics than ours? <laughs> just in <laughs> just in the creature. Like, 
their intestines are a portal to a different world. I feel like that's a very Star Wars physics. Star Wars esque answer to, to stuff. Yeah. Right. Or do we think like? Because I agree. Like, either either they make the poop very quickly, so normally they're not carrying around poop inside of them, and and that's why. Yeah. So that's one thing. I mean, like, I guess it could be because they are like sapient creatures they could have just like modified themselves to like have robot parts inside them that connect to different worlds that's and dimensions that's a good that's a good point um yeah so i think so here's here's kind of what i'm working on right now in my brain okay Mm -hmm. i think the reason Mm -hmm. that they have to consume so much is because the 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 thing they're looking for to generate energy is very is very specific and in very low quantities in most creatures. So they have to consume a lot of mass to get it out. Oh yeah, and that causes so much like byproduct from the consumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. Maybe here's an idea. Mm-hmm. Maybe what they're doing is they're cons- like maybe they they're not powered by like organic matter like carbon maybe they're powered mm-hmm. by like uh, like trace metals or like maybe they got like a they need the deuterium excuse me to make mm-hmm. like a nuclear reactor inside mm-hmm. of them and so what they're just doing is it's just it's just it's you know their mouth is uh is a portal to a different to like a machine mm-hmm. then ooh, i kind of like this idea so yeah, their mouth is a portal to a different machine, but not like a different dimension. It's just a machine that exists mm-hmm. somewhere, or maybe several machines that exist, and all of the Niblonians are feeding it, and it powers all of them. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and that explains why they, like, don't... Like, how they can eat an entire animal when they themselves are tiny. Yes, yes, yes. And it's just it's just getting sucked into this machine that just compresses it takes out whatever like deuterium it needs and Mm -hmm. then it sends like a very concentrated ball back to the niblonian and the niblonian uh you know passes it yes right screens it so it Mm -hmm. so the niblonian itself is very light but for a second it you know it is a portal it does have this big very dense pellet of uh, uh, excess, just organic trash material that they don't need. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. <clears throat> I I like it. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's yeah good. That, it sounds. I think we kind of did better on that than I thought we would have. Yeah, I mean, we're not gonna get into how the portal works. It just does. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the the meta episode of Futurama. <laughs> Where we, uh, where we where we do a podcast episode of our podcast. <laughs> we do the, our second Ouroboros. <laughs> so, uh, we want to do one more? Uh, sure. Why not? I can't stop you. You can't. You well, you could. You could. Uh, you could just. Yeah, sorry. Listen. I cut you off with the with the throat <laughs> noises again. Listen, this is our. This is the third episode. Okay, of Jeff's throat noises. Oh, Jeff's throat noise. Hey, for as long as winter exists, I will have bronchitis. <laughs> it will be. Welcome to my life. That's, yeah. Sorry, Jeff. I shouldn't make fun of you for being an uh, uh, inferior species. Inferior species yeah, I was going to say, having worse genetics and being prone to getting bronchitis because of asthma. Exactly. Because everyone knows I have great genetics. My teeth stay in my head. What with all those teeth that are in your head, yeah. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I was worried that one of my caps fell off my, my teeth. And I was like, oh no, it's just a... Uh, it just is very small. Oh god, it's happening again. <laughs> uh, 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 it's, yeah, it's sad. Anyway. So, Nibbler's owner is a woman right. named Taranka Leela. Mm-hmm. Who is a mutant. Sorry, spoilers, everybody. She's not an alien. She's immune. Mm-hmm. The issue is... I have to sneeze. <laughs> the, <laughs> the issue is... Jeff has to fill in time while I wind up for a sneeze. <laughs> Don't mind us. Uh, so so she gets turned into a mutant by exposure to the to the waste of New York City. And there's a whole bunch of, of, of 
genetically viable mutants living underneath New York. Mm-hmm. How? What is? What do we think? <laughs> How? <laughs> How? Good question. What? <laughs> what do we think is in the waste that is causing them to become mutants, but still genetically viable mutants? So, like, yeah. Um, that is also a lot because it's not like small mutations. It's like it's like tentacles or one eye. Yeah, or like that guy who's uh-huh. just a foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, beans. Uh, I guess it would be... Maybe they're not, like, very viable mutants. And they just, like, there is a chance that some combination of mutated genes will actually create something that'll exist and live. Throat noises. Throat noises. Carry on. So, it's going to be great to edit this episode. I'm good. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> A little sorry. It's it's fine. What I, yeah, I like this idea. I also like maybe the, maybe the the, like, maybe the 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 the, the mutations don't actually affect the gametes. I mean, hmm, I don't know how it would affect everything else, but not the gametes, or like be a very specific mutation to like. And then there is a tentacle here instead of an arm. What if what if it's what if it's just viruses? What if that's what it is? Or like cancers? I can get behind cancers for some of them. Because we're talking about we're talking about again, remember, we're talking just about the waste of New York. This doesn't necessarily have to be like high energy. It could just be biologically active. Mm-hmm. So so maybe it's you know, it's just got a lot of carcinogens in them. It's got a lot of viruses and parasites in them. And they're not actually mutants, but they're just people who are just very, very sick. <laughs> <laughs> and because of the the technology in the year 3000, they're able to, like, stay alive despite all of the sick, the, the cancers and whatnot. Yes. But but not only are they allowed to stay alive, are they able to stay alive? Well, I think it's not as much allowed to stay yeah, alive as they're able to keep them alive. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it's I don't think it's just that they're able to stay alive, but also that like the the cancers and things can grow and can change into things like tentacles or like you know it, it, it can cause like physical differences in the person because. They're being kept alive while this thing is while what would have normally killed them is now just running rampant, unchecked. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe one of the ways it gets you know they're able to stay alive is that instead of killing the cancer, it just turns the cancer into something that um, can be remotely productive. Yeah, yeah, or at least that you can live with. Mm-hmm. So like maybe it's like oh the cancer is in this certain section of genetic material. Let's like like mess with like the 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 telomeres and things like that so that different parts of the genetic material is being encoded Mm -hmm. and and what we're actually seeing is just like there's like latent squid dna (laughs) in people well i think at that point it wouldn't even necessarily have to be latent squid dna if it's like people treating them for their cancers this way they could just be like injecting squid dna different yeah squid dna in there just says uh terrible uh unethical science experiment and and yeah i mean what happens underneath new york stays underneath new york (laughs) that's what they say in the commercials (laughs) yeah i like this i think that this makes a lot of sense yeah that also fits better than i thought we were going to do and i think it also maybe we're just getting better at this I, is that what it is i think we're just getting i think well no i think we were already good at it and i think that we're just getting even better at it oh, okay yeah i think we were already amazing and now we're like really cool <laughs> we just finally hit you know s tier yeah yeah we're we're like we got our we got our hunter license we passed the licensing exam you know we're gonna go gonna go to the tower of whatever it is and we're gonna fight to to floor uh uh uh, 239 and it's gonna be great it's a a deep hunter x hunter uh 
did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess yeah, that's yeah. why it was entirely lost on me. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm like searching through the archives of like different game knowledge and like just pop culture and like I I got nothing. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I had two ways I could go. I could do custom robo or I could do Hunter X Hunter. And I chose Hunter X Hunter. <laughs> custom robo probably would have fit better. <laughs> <laughs> Would not have helped me anyway. So yeah, so I was going to add one thing. I think I like this idea because one of the things I realized is that Taranga Leela doesn't exhibit totally the uh, mutations of her parent. Right. So I'm wondering if when she was born a mutant, you know, she's inoculated with all the garbage down there, at least a little bit of it. And Mm -hmm. it's and it's just the fact that she is such a similar genetic code to her parents that causes her to have similar mutations. Um, I guess that kind of departs from the previous explanation. Uh, unless they're also... Like, whatever crazed scientists are doing this are also affecting the gametes. Well, that's 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 what I mean. I, that's what I mean. Like, if she was born above ground, she would be just like a normal functioning creature. Human. That's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> like she would have right. she would have two eyes she would be completely fine mm-hmm. but it's because she's born underground that she's like inoculated with all the stuff like like the she she becomes a mutant and okay I see. and the reason she's so she her mutations are so similar to her parents are because she is so similar to her parents so they're kind of like the mm-hmm. yeah so, so like what would be mutated yeah like lines up to be the same things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool 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 that, that i mean that sounds good to me i think yeah. i think we did it i think we did everything in our <laughs> every single thing every, in future yep we're not going to address uh the weird stem cell bath <laughs> or the robots actually boy this is or the robots or the smart hat Oh, <laughs> that the professor gave that monkey oh, one time. Yes, I forgot about that. Hey, that's for episode two. Episode two of Futurama. Yep, not of the show. Come back next time when we do that eventually. Eventually, all of the other second episodes that we've gotten around to. <laughs> hey, I mean, eventually we'll run out of ideas and have to <laughs> dip back into what we've done already. Boy, Jeff, you clearly have not looked at the list recently i've looked at the list have you added a lot to it recently i I have it but there's quite a bit there's like uh there's like a whole half a page of suggestions that we haven't even touched yet we can totally do look at us go we're gonna do this futurama too yeah just that i because i will forget i know that there's other twos that we have forgotten about i think we did (laughs) oh for sure yeah Uh uh-huh who knows anyway Thanks for listening, you smart Listeners? and intelligent and beautiful person. You're uh, you're a mensch. That's all. It's, I think that should be our sign that's, off. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, like and subscribe to us. On uh, I have a tissue on my foot now that's not coming off. All right. Well, don't like and subscribe to us <laughs> on that because I haven't bought that URL yet. <laughs> Um, it had, it had try Spotify or any podcasting app. YouTube works. Uh, um, mm-hmm. Yep. What else we got? We got the 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 Twitter. That's the one. I was stuck on Instagram. Like, that's not right. <laughs> we do not have um, an Instagram. <laughs> we have been advised yet. to get an Instagram. Yeah, dude, we're gonna be social media moguls once we learn how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> once we learn how to do social media. Yeah, what do we got? We got the Twitter, we got the website, which is pedantichandwavium dot com. Uh, circling back to the Twitter, that's at p handwavium. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you can give us show suggestions. Yep. Through the internet. Either either the, through the website. The, the website would be easiest. Oh, you could also send it to me. us on Twitter because I I do look at it. It's um, just me you alone. You can shout it very loud out your window. And if you live close enough to us, we'll hear. Yep. <laughs> so it's a good way of like echo locating us so that you can dox us real easily. <laughs> That's it. Also a good uh word of mouth advertisement. Also a good word of mouth, yeah. Because everyone loves to listen to the podcast that their neighbors are shouting at them about. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean that's how I get my podcast that I listen to. Yeah. 
I only uh, exclusively people shouting at me. I went to New York City the other day, and just the number of people <laughs> yelling. So many new podcasts. So many new podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do we got? We got Joe Sobchak, oh, yeah. the fellow who gave us the theme music. Yep. That theme music does get stuck in your head, and it's not unpleasant. <laughs> High praise from Simon. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. He's he's no drop electric, okay? Right. But he's he's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it definitely is music. The our theme song <laughs> is the temporary secretary of podcast intros. Uh for sure. Actually, that's maybe <laughs> not as weird, though. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if if Jeff and I ever start a, a different podcast, for sure, temporary secretary is going to be maybe our podcast theme if we can get it. Maybe our podcast opening if we can afford to license it one day. Yes, yes, it's very good. I love it. <laughs> It is really good. So good. Y'all should give it a listen. I listen to it it's probably about once a day, actually. Cause it's just <laughs> It's just on your daily playlist. Yeah, now. it just it just gets you in this kind of mindset where you're like, you know what, I I can do me and I'm gonna do my best and And I need to get a temporary and, and secretary. I need to get a, yeah, someone for not very long. Uh exactly. Alright. Yeah, I think before we continue quoting <laughs> amazingly <laughs> bad song. Uh, we should finish the sign out. What else do we got? I think that was it, actually. I think, yeah, I think that's it. Alright. Well, good night, listener. Good night. Have a great day. We love you.